My talk tonight is, is there a thirst for Swedenborg's message in the world today? I think to answer that, we got to look at the world today. That's always fun, isn't it? Um, I would have to say, on paper, it doesn't look very good. It doesn't seem like it's the kind of world that would be thirsty for that. One reason is there's this thing that came out... Um, you know, it's, I think it's going to be pretty big, came out a little while ago, maybe it's called the internet. Do you know it? It's a very tech savvy crowd here. Um, they had a saying about the internet when I first got onto YouTube in 2010, and that saying was, the internet is, does this keep cutting out? Is that ruining it? I could just go and get this other one. Okay. The saying is this, the internet is where religion goes to die. <laughs> and when I got on YouTube in 20, 2010, I, I believed that. I mean, it definitely seemed like things were not going well for religion. YouTube as a platform was dominated by huge atheist deconstructionist channels. These were people who often had been raised religious and had felt like that was harmful to them. And what they would do, and just for millions and millions and millions of views, was they would rip apart the logical errors in Christianity or whatever religion they came from. They would harp on the ethical issues with it, where they say, look, this is not fair. How could you worship a God who does this in this chapter of the Old Testament? And they were, it's not like they were making bad points. You had to kind of say, yeah, I guess so. So they, there was a few, there were a few Christian channels, but they were fundamentalists, and they're small, and they were getting just killed. They were just getting killed. So it seemed like, yeah, this is the, the general vibe was religion is outdated. We've got science now. It's, it's, religion is actually harmful. The world is better off without it. This was in the throes, the thick of the new atheism. I don't know if anyone, this is maybe just a little bubble of the world that I understand, but there was this time in which, and I know because all these people would come and comment on my videos, like, you're so dumb, you don't know what you're talking about. Um, there was, new atheism was like Richard Dawkins had just written The God Delusion, which was a huge bestseller. Christopher Hitchens wrote the book, um, God is Not Great, How Religion Poisons Everything. And then there was uh, Sam Harris, Dan Dennett. That stuff was peaking, and it just seemed like the world doesn't need that. There's a new, brave world that's ahead, and we're going to go into it. So that doesn't seem like a kind of world that's going to be very thirsty for, for Swedenborg. Because he's, he's kind of religious, isn't he? <laughs> you get in there, and there's a little bit of, we're talking about the Bible, we're talking about the Lord, we're talking about the angels. So that's a problem. The, but that's actually, Swedenborg has been having problems since before the internet. <laughs> well, I mean, you tell me if you think this is a problem. Do you know how it went when the writings first came out? Okay, so this is, in my humble opinion, like the coolest thing, the coolest piece of art to ever drop in history. Anything this is the best thing, in my humble opinion, that's been written that wasn't written in correspondences. This is a title page of, well, nowadays we say, oh, is it, is it Arcana Celestia or is it Secrets of Heaven? Back then it was Arcana Celestia because it was, everyone was, it was actually like however you'd say that in Swedish Latin. Arcana Celestia. <laughs> my grandfather is from Sweden, so I can, that's not bad for me to say, mock that. And Sweden, so the, the stage it needs to be set this way. The greatest thing had ever happened, it, this um, incredible dispensation of the highest grade knowledge you could possibly imagine, I, I think from God, right to Swedenborg, he's, got, he's had this whole period of opening up and awakening, and he takes this brilliant mind that Providence had organized and start to set, and then it's opened up, and he's written this thing down that's, that there's nothing that precedes it, that, that has this kind of accessible, life-giving truth in it. And he knows how to work the press. He knows how to write. He gets that all together, and he launches this thing into the world. And what kind of reception did he get? Well, you tell me if these are good numbers. This is from his Journal of Spiritual Experiences. I received a letter saying that not more than four copies had been sold within two months. 
I can imagine, and he's telling this to, to angels. Swedenborg could see angels. And he's saying, I can imagine they're kind of like his board of directors. And they're saying, he's like, they're like, okay, this is so exciting. This, this wisdom that you've, that you've got from heaven, given it to the world, how's that going? Oh, I mean, we're doing all right. <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know, compared to what? <laughs> and this was bad. The sales were bad enough that it shocked the angels. They were indeed surprised. But they're angels, so they were, they were chill. They said that it must be left to the providence of the Lord and that it is such that it compels no one. So even divine providence cannot force you to read Swedenborg. <laughs> Would not put you through that. So, and listen, it got better for him. This, this was the, the hardest sell. The stuff in Arcana Celestia is the, the biblical exegesis, and it's, it's a lot. I love it, but it's an acquired taste. It's dense. It's complex. It's academic. People have a hard time getting through that. So it's a hard thing to start with. Later, Heaven and Hell came out in 1758, which was a lot more accessible. More people bought it. But Heaven and Hell, in a way, was a commercial for Secrets of Heaven. It's got a ton of... Uh, it's my favorite book, I'd say, of the writings. Although, that's hard to... I uh, Don't quote me on that. But... <laughs> At the end of every page, it's got all these references back to, you know, if you like this, please read Secrets of Heaven. Um, so it got a little bit better, but this was always the hardest material. The internal sense of the word was the hardest material to sell. So if you were going to try to test the waters to see if there's a thirst for Swedenborg's message today, what you would not do is make a video about the internal sense of the word, Right? <laughs> That's, I mean, maybe do something about life after death, but don't, don't like do a whole hour long video about the stuff that's in the first volume of Arcana Celestia. Like, for example, the meaning of Adam and Eve. Okay, we did that. <laughs> we made that video. And I think, you know, it, you could probably go into that expecting it would be more than four views in two months. Um, but how many people are going to want to dive into an hour-long session about it? Could you get 400? I mean, hopefully. I, I would love to see it up, and maybe you could be dreaming that maybe a 1,000 people would want to watch this if it really got down to it. This video right now has 220,685 views. <laughs> and I, I made that a few days ago. It's still getting a few hundred views a day, so that's out of date. Um, what I want to impress on you right now is that there's a thirst for Swedenborg's message, and you can tell it because of how people react when they encounter it. Swedenborg, the message in the writings, does incredible good for every kind of person that it touches. That's been my almost dreamlike experience over the past 14 years, is that this stuff is magic. I can make a video, and we watch it back, and I think to myself, we did not do a good job on that video. And you put it up, and people just talk about how it changed their life. All of you, I bet, have some kind of affection for Swedenborg's writings. Do you know how I know that? <laughs> it's Friday night, and where are you? <laughs> What are you doing on Friday, man? Oh, I'm going to Swedenborg's birthday banquet. You know, the 18th century scientist and theologian. <laughs> Party. <laughs> uh, you need to under, you, and I think when you love Swedenborg's writings, what you love the most is knowing that they have done good for people, and you love it when people develop an affection for them. So I want to show you undeniably that this is what happens. So this video, I want to show you a couple of comments that people have left on this video. What kind of, resp is th what kind of response would indicate a thirst? Like, you've quenched my thirst. This is too small for you to read so that you can't read ahead of me, because I know everybody does that. This is from Alexis Dunham. This is what they said when you give them an hour of explaining the inner meaning of Adam and Eve. You might think it might say, please help, how do I get out of this? But what it says is, I needed this. I watched the entire thing through and stopped many times to write things down, blessed that this exists. 
That's how I feel. Yeah, yeah, okay, we can clap about that. <laughs> Good night, everyone. That's how I feel about the writings. Blessed that they, that they exist. That is exactly why. I didn't even think about it before this moment. That's why when I say it was so exciting when Swedenborg launched the first Arcanus Lecia, those books have been a better friend to me than anything I've ever come across. That someone else, this is not somebody that you know, this person is not in this room. They right away are blessed that this exists. And there was uh, 20 other people gave a, that a thumbs up. Like, I, I feel the same way. Next one, this is from Yinka. Do you know Yinka? I've been interested in Swedenborg for a long time. Okay, so this is someone who had known of Swedenborg, but not been able to find any of his books in Dutch. You can imagine my happiness to have found your shows. Quite sometimes I've thrown the Bible in a corner, thinking, what a lousy book, knowing I wasn't able to grasp its true meaning. Thanks so much for enlightening us. 1,000 thumbs up. So there's another way in which... So the first one was his benefit general benefit. This is saying, I, I suddenly now can love this book, love the Bible because of what you guys are doing. And 11 people thumbs that up too. Next one is from LCD8326. Do you, yeah, do you, yeah, do you know them? This was amazing. Thank you. My understanding of how Swedenborg aligns with my faith in Christianity seems to be falling into place now as I have watched a handful of your videos. All the time people say, I've been binge watching your videos. I watched this one and I watched that one because once you pop, you can't stop. If you get a little bit of Swedenborg's worldview, it starts to clarify everything, and you want more, and the more that you know of it, the be more beautiful the picture is. I also think your video, Why Bad Things Happen, opened my eyes a lot and really helped me. Something led me to off the left. I can't thank you guys enough. You all seem very genuine as well. God bless you all, and Happy New Year. So, that's just the first three comments that I, I looked up. Okay, there's, a, there's, there's thousands of comments on that one. Um, and that's, remember, that's the secrets of heaven. That's the internal sense of the word. What if we just sold out and did the afterlife stuff? <laughs> we just, all right, we'll just make a video. We, this is called What Happens Immediately After You Die. This video has over 5 million views right now. 45,000 thumbs up on that. Let's see how, it, and how did it affect people. What does the thing that you love that get, made you give your Friday night to the Swedenborg banquet, what does it do for human beings when they encounter it? What problems? Why do you think I'm in the game? Why do you think I'm in the Swedenborg game? It, because it can solve problems like nothing else can. I think deep down that's why you love it. Because it's like the Lord is reaching in there and making these miracles happen. So here's a couple of miracles that happened. Swedenborg's teachings got me through the loss of my mom and made me realize she's still with me. Thank you. 72 thumbs up on that. My son, this is from Betsy Walsh, my son and I, again, I don't know any of these people. <laughs> my son and I just watched this together. He hung on to every word. Ever since his dad died two years ago, he's been struggling to make sense of an afterlife that's described just like this. Thank you. 41 hearts on that. Finally, I've been scared of death ever since I've understood that death happens. I think God led me to this video. I'm not even halfway through the video, and I feel a sense of calm. Thank you for this. 199. If any of you log on right now, you can make that 200. <laughs> okay, so, great. The afterlife stuff sells, but what you got to stay away from is any of the weird stuff. Because Swedenborg can get kind of weird. We love him. We're celebrating his birthday, but he can get a little bit weird. So you would never make a video that's called Eight Strange Places in the Afterlife. <laughs> 244,000 views. And, and what, what impact does it have when you show people the weird stuff? Do they say, that was weird, that was superficial, and barely impacted me? This is comments from that video. I just lost my fiancé to cancer. Watching your videos helped me a lot to have a peaceful heart knowing that he is in a better place now. Thank you for all your videos. You've helped me to understand how much God and Jesus loves us. I've always been an anxious person, especially with God. The more I immerse myself into the Word of God, I relax. God wants us to love Him and one another. Again, thank you. That's what you get from describing eight strange places in the afterlife. Because, because and this is why, some people might think Swedenborg 
is, is out there or has weird things about him, but not really. He'll describe really intense things, but it all points back to very, very practical, loving, core of life truths. And that's why no matter what we put out there, people get their, touches their heart, touches their heart. Okay, one more. Fascinating stuff. Swedenborg's experiences and spiritual understanding is very consistent with the Baha'i teachings. Has anyone ever heard of Baha'i? I'd never heard of it, but now everybody says, this is just like Baha'i. Concerning the characteristics of the next world, so for me that is strong evidence that Swedenborg is the real thing and his experiences were real. He must have been an exceptionally mature soul to have been able to understand and communicate his experiences. He must have been very frustrated with the people of his time who did not give him a hearing. Only four copies sold. He hit the nail on the head concerning the clergy. Derek Malcolm... Okay, but definitely, okay, so that, that some people have a curiosity about that. What you definitely cannot do is any of the, like, scary stuff or the weird stuff, or, like, evil spirits or something. So we skipped over that. We don't talk about hell. Just kidding. This video is called <laughs> How to Deal with Evil Spirits. 284,000 views as of now. What kind of response is that going to get, what does that do for a human being to learn about how Swedenborg describes the dark side of consciousness? This is from Arsenal. I am a Muslim, and I can relate so much to Swedenborg. It's way deeper than differences. It's spirituality. It's oneness. He was spiritually awoken, and we're lucky he wrote it down. 55 thumbs up. This is the most helpful spiritual guidance video I have ever listened to. Priscilla Watson, if you're keeping track. Bless you for uploading. Thank you so much. God bless. And people even pick up on the repentance angle of it. Enjoyed this video. There's a lot of good insights. A person must change their thinking, way of life, and associations to cut out the negative. Because, again, talk about weird things, and it gets back to, who's going to argue with that? Do, we want, do you want your neighbor to be thinking like that? Yes, you do. So it almost seems like there's nothing you can throw at people that they're not thirsty for from Swedenborg's writings, except the, the guy himself. You could never just have a video that's like Swedenborg 101. People have no context for that. They're not interested in that. <laughs> this is called Swedenborg 101, The Basic Nature of Everything, 153,000 views. You know this game by now. I've only been studying a couple of months, but I am honored to be here. I've suffered from chronic illness and depression my whole life. I grew up in a very religious family. Unfortunately, it was hurting more than helping. I have so much peace learning about these teachings and blessings to all who teach this positivity. Being so close to dying many times due to illness, I no longer have that fear. I'll enjoy my life on this side and look forward to the other side as well, where many of my loved ones await. What made me decide to study Swedenborg was when I learned he predicted his exact transition date. Did you guys know that? It's that well documented that Swedenborg told two people, this is when I'm going to die. And then he died right then. That says so much to where you're open-minded and say, hey, I could learn something here. This is truly a breath of fresh air. There's only two more of these quotes. So you may be thinking, wow, he put too many of these in here, but you're going to miss them when I'm done. <laughs> have, you, have you ever written a, a comment on a YouTube video? Most people haven't. What would compel you as a human being to go out and write something like this. Think about the actual experience and the feelings the person on the other side of that keyboard went through that led them to go and do this. These are, these are humans on the other side of this. Barry Tegler, 986, is a human. I have had a number of direct spiritual experiences from a very young age. This presentation confirms as well as explains the meaning of some of those experiences. The role of a prophet was rarely easy, as was the life of Swedenborg. I plan to study this channel extensively, as well as resuming reading his works that I purchased many years ago. So, and that just says spiritual teachings because the comment went on and I didn't get rid of that part. Um, the, do you notice the variety of impact that it has on people? The only common denominator is it's all deep and it all means a lot. So that, I mean, it can seem like if you're a Swedenborgian, like myself, like we're just like laboring away in this vineyard. Like, okay, we're, we're keeping the writings together, we're, we're loving them, we're, and is, does anyone care? So to see this is so gratifying. 
to know not just that people are interested, but that it impacts them like it impacts us, that, that feeling, I still am not used to that feeling. Last one. I just love Swedenborg's perspective and description of the afterlife. So comforting. We didn't stop there. You want to make a video about hell? Sure. 106,000 views. What is hell really life? like? All kinds of people saying, that's so great. That frees me from my fear of hell. Oh, that's so good. Uh, conjugal love. We did a show called Spiritual Marriage. 208,000 views. How about we try to make one that no one would want to look at? The meaning of numbers. <laughs> the correspondential meaning of what is seven correspond to? What is eight correspond to? 867,000 views on that one and counting. This handsome fellow is Dr. Jonathan Rose. He and I did a little discussion that was a, uh, entitled, Why Don't Those Who Have Died Communicate With Us More? That's got 1.6 million views and climbing. This one here is called, Are There Families in Heaven? And I had two general church ministers sit at a table with me and discuss that. And one of them, who shall remain nameless, said to me, that's a weird title for a video, when I told him what the title was going to be. And he was right, but it's still got 160,000 views, so <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> why, why does the Bible say the dead know nothing? 160,000 views. Why some people in the afterlife don't know they're dead? 373,000 views. And you know what? I, I wasn't going to put a quote from this one, but you think that's a weird, quirky video. Here's the, a comment on this video. My brother passed away last Saturday night, and I recently found these videos. They are the only thing, along with God's grace, that's keeping me strong and sane. Okay? So is there a thirst for Swedenborg's message? Yeah. Um, there's been a thirst in uh, other podcasts. I've been invited on a lot of people's channels when they hear about Swedenborg and they want to know more. This, there's a guy named Alex Ferrari. He has a podcast called The Next Level Soul Podcast. Five months ago, I was on that thing. Look at me. Oh! And the true purpose of death, uh, 284,000 views in just five months. This is an hour and 19 minutes of him asking me everything about Swedenborg and me just telling him everything about Swedenborg. Um, I've been doing talks. This is There's a thing called the Conference for Consciousness and Human Evolution. I've, I just spoke with them in San Diego in January. This photo was, uh, that was in Palm Beach, Florida. I also did London with them. Uh, the guy uh, who runs this contacted me like seven years ago. I was like, you want to come to London and talk about Swedenborg? And I was like, oh no, okay. <laughs> anyway, yeah, and I was supposed to talk about some of the weirdest Swedenborg stuff, but I was like, okay, the, a thousand people will be in this room, and I talk to them for an hour and a half about Swedenborg. They are standing ovation every time. Not because I'm doing such an amazing job at it, but just because the truth is the truth. Truth is the truth, and it hits people like it does. Also, the International Association for Near-Death Studies. I spoke there a few times about the connection between Swedenborg and near-death experiences. Um, oh, yeah, this is, um, this is in London. Um, my, I wanted to get everyone to say hi to my daughter. So this is what I did at the end. This is just after my talk had finished and I had some goodwill built up. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Hi, singing! <laughs> I love you, see you soon. Thanks everybody. All those people ne never heard of Swedenborg and, and loved it, and just totally loved it. Uh, if you want to go to Toronto, th there's a picture of me from 100 years ago. <laughs> Look at the amount of hair that was there. Um, we'll be in Toronto September 13th. By the way, the, probably the place we get the most engagement is Facebook. This is, we, we, we spend some money to promote posts on Facebook. This quote, all love for goodness and all wisdom about truth come from God. Could you get a more Swedenborg quote than that? Goodness and truth. And who's going to be into that? 23,000 people. 23,000 people have liked that. 1.5 thousand shares, 882 comments. We are regularly getting this kind of output on our Facebook stuff. There's a couple of new things that we're doing because we want to continue to, where, where is there another space? Where is there another space? We started doing reaction videos. So I have a channel called Curtis Reacts, a Swedenborgian perspective on modern life. That's where I just go and watch what other people are doing and then do what I always do in my head, which is, oh, this is where that lines up with Swedenborg. 
Here's a little, here's a one minute clip if, to show you what I mean by a reaction video. This is me watching somebody and then barging in on his, this, this is a clip of a very famous guy. His name is um, uh, Alex Huberman. Anyway, he, I'm not on his show. I'm just watching his video and then lending my own commentary. There's DNA, then there's RNA, and then there's proteins. And proteins are the action end of the game where they say, hey, like, grow over here, don't grow over there. This has nothing to do with Huberman's faith in God, but him just saying that right there, DNA to RNA to proteins, and proteins are the action. 1700s, Emanuel Swedenborg says he has these visions, goes and sees the God and how God works and everything, and says that all of reality is structured around love, which is the underlying essence of thing, wisdom, which is the manifestation, and then use, which is the actions of those things. Man, I'm talking about DNA, RNA, and proteins. You have the DNA, which is the thing that's kind of like stays in this little world. RNA is the, the thing that emanates from that, which then actually touches the molecules that need to make the proteins that go do the stuff. That's love, wisdom, and use, baby. Huberman, did you hear that? Do you know that? How do I comment that's him? Yeah. So what we'll try to do there is surf web trends. And we had a recently did a video about, uh, there's a, Brit a Welsh rapper who did this song, and me and my friend Reed reacted to that. And I talked to so much Swedenborg in it that we got a good number of comments like, why are you talking so much about Swedenborg in this video? But this is a comment from this gentleman who looks like he's a priest. I enjoyed the interaction between the two of you in the analysis. Curtis, I think you'll find Ren creates a fertile field for that type of analysis that you do. He has several songs on serious spiritual topics. I look forward to your further analysis. That same guy, that same day, went to our, another one of our videos and says, thanks, interesting ideas. I will look into Swedenborg. Gotcha. Gotcha. All of you can help me in this if you want. You can go and look up these videos and watch them and comment on them and share them and like them. All that matters a lot in how many people end up seeing it. Because every time you do any of those things, YouTube or Facebook or whatever thinks, oh, people like this. I'm going to show it to more people. So if you're ever wondering, how can I help spread Swedenborg's message in the world? That's an easy way. All those people who left those comments, the comments are just sitting there. Anybody can log in and write to them anytime. You want to talk to somebody who's, who's had their life changed by Swedenborg or wants to know more about it? Go ahead. Just get on, you can get on your phone right now and go do it. I'm not saying that I need help, but it gets a little overwhelming at times. So there is a thirst for Swedenborg in the world today. And the picture that I painted of that bleak internet where religion goes to die, that was in 2010. It's not 2010 anymore. This is a book by a man named Justin Brierley who did a series of debates on YouTube where he hosts a show where an atheist and a religious person or something like that would kind of debate things. I came across an interview with him. He said I, he wrote this book called The Surprising Rebirth of Belief in God. And I thought, well, that's interesting. I didn't know that happened. And I read it, and what it says, it put words to something that I had absolutely noticed for myself, but hadn't put it all together, which is that YouTube is completely different now than it was in 2010. YouTube is chock full of religion and spirituality now. There are so many channels involved in Christianity and spirituality. It's hard for us to get a word in edgewise anymore. And people are looking for exactly what Swedenborg has to offer. I think we're just at the dawn of the world really finding Swedenborg. And the reason why I say that is when... Um, when in the beginning there were all those uh, objections to religion that I heard people making and critiques of the way that re religion can go wrong, one of the reasons why I wanted to jump into YouTube with both feet is that I saw those are the exact same critiques that Swedenborg made of religion. The exact same questions people have are the ones that he were answering, was answering. There is a Swedenborg-shaped hole in the discourse right now. I'm talking about the curly wig and everything. <laughs> what Swedenborg offers is actually exactly what the world is looking for now. 
there, people are starting to see, oh, if you just take the religion out of society, things stop working. People are looking for something that's deep. People are looking for something that is fair and morally sound and rationally sound. And people are looking for something that accounts for the whole story of the human race. This is exactly what Swedenborg has. People want something that is got some weight to it and then requires something of them and asks them to live a certain kind of life. Swedenborg has that. There's a thirst for Swedenborg. I hope I've inspired you some by showing you how people have already responded to that, but I think it's nothing compared to where we can go. And I think all of you can be part of that with me. And I want to end by saying thank you because it was through your, your continued dedication to the cause that this thing is still going. If each one of us wasn't doing our little part to keep this series of books on the face of the earth, it could have very easily at several points in history just gone away. But uh, they didn't, and I think that was by providence, but providence works through means, and I think you all are the means. So thank you for doing that, and I just wanted to communicate to you today that it has mattered. It has mattered in a huge way. I just had a guy comment the other day um, on one of my videos. He's saying, tuning in from Scotland, Curtis, you're never going to have any idea how many people's lives you've changed. Maybe you'll see it in the afterlife. Um, but I, I'm, I'm just an extension of this community. I'm just an extension of everybody who has been part of the cause since back to Swedenborg, who was just an extension of the Lord. So I think that this is a confirmation that we are touching more people's lives than we could ever imagine, and we're touching them more deeply and fully than I could ever imagine. That's the promise of the Lord as I see him in the writings, is that life can be better than you ever thought it could be. Thanks, everyone, for helping to bring that goodness into the world with me. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.